guilty pleasure with a capital G- Normally, adapting one media to another comes with a few sacrifices, whether it be the story being changed or maybe the limitations of the medium is preventing the entire experience from being realized. Two adaptations were made and released at about the same time last year during Funimation Simulcast Summer, and being that they are both anime adaptations of video games, I figured they were relevant enough to talk about together. Neptunia the Animation is one of those anime that took the original formula and made something entirely new using the mythos. But it's still got some issues. Gamers, listen carefully. Here is your hook. What if Nintendo's longtime rival in the 90s Mega! was still in the console race? Sounds pretty cool, right? One big what if scenario for the seventh console generation. But there's more. Every console is represented by a cute Moe girl, and they fight an actual console war. Finally! Ah, oh, you won't be looked down on for humping your PS3 anymore, Carl! This is the thesis of the Hyperdimension Neptunia series, but it uses two unique quirks to the fullest, gamer humor and shame. Being that the games weren't the hottest RPGs gameplay-wise, but the small improvements as the series continued has made them passable, how does this get translated to anime? Actually, it seemed like the next logical step. The four CPUs of game industry have signed a peace treaty. Psh, like that would happen in this day and age. Microsoft and Sony are too busy trying to copy one another, while Nintendo silently makes fun games off in its own little world, and Sega sits off on the sidelines giving exclusives to the current winner. This series likes to rely on terms that mainly gamers would know, so... If I were to say that the CPUs are the goddesses of their respective continents that are powered by shares, which are basically the people siding with their favorite game console, you know what area you're in. One thing I will give this show props for is that the gamer humor itself likes to go way back. It even mentions the Microsoft Zune, who even remembers those? And Sony's security breach, which hilariously was mentioned by the CPU representing Nintendo. You'll also enjoy how Atari and the PC are represented. Speaking of CPUs, choose your girl, choose your console. Neptune is self-aware, she makes the most jokes and is the goofball of the series. She represents Planetune and the Sega Neptune. You know, the console that never saw the light of day. Noir is prim, proper, and secretly loves cosplay and is the tsundere of the CPUs. Actually, you don't need anyone else. I'm good here. She watches over Last Station and represents the PlayStation 3. Blanc has the harshest mouth and the shortest fuse imaginable, but loves her people and treats them right. She overlooks Louis and represents the Nintendo Wii. And elegant Lady Vert has the best hardware. Oh, and she knows it. She loves playing games and isn't afraid to call you a noob because she's better at the game than you. She guards Leanbox and is the persona of the Xbox 360. There are other characters that represent different companies that helped with the game, the CPU sisters, which are the handheld consoles, but we're mainly dealing with these four console waifus, so choose wisely. As an adaptation, you have to get creative with how you tackle the story so that fans are happy and newcomers can enjoy it too. This happens to be a double-edged sword because using elements from all the main entries in the series to make a story, new be lost so fast! Only if you played the games would you know who Pirachu and Arfoir are, what the game industry graveyard is, why Iris Heart and Piyashi exist, the fact another hyperdimension exists. First time watchers probably wouldn't understand the joke of the continent names at first glance and why the CPU designs are so brilliant. You'll need some backstory to 100% enjoy the show because this one won't explain anything to you. It's fan service in both senses of the term, but isn't every adaptation? Oh, speaking of fan service, it knows what you're here for. From day one, these games appeal to one type of audience, and it uses every single trope in the book to make this as shameful as possible. Want a good example? The ending has all the CPUs balancing on giant boobs. Neptunes transform boobs, I might add. They aren't even trying, are they? Bouncing everywhere, blushing, misunderstandings. If you've seen one show do this, Neptunia will do it too, because that's the point! In fact, it knows what you otaku want so bad that there is a giant tongue monster that only has interest in the CPU sisters representing the DS. You know... The little lolly girls who are younger than 10. It's okay, though. He says he's a gentleman who wouldn't dare harm girls who haven't reached pubescence. He just wants to lick them. I have a feeling this is how Palm from Boku no Pico defenders act. This is the police! Oh, look Open at that, right on cue. This is the lolly All I did was watch the episode and they showed up. Force. Impressive. Open up in there. We know you're Excuse in me a sec. You're coming with us. I'm fucking Kill the sorry. Now! 
Shut up, dirtbag! Don't try to hide. Resistance is futile. Don't make this harder than it has to be. You're going to rot, you sick pervert! So is this show a technical beast? Nah, it's kind of stiff animation-wise. You won't get more than a tough look or a simple sword slash. It eventually gets better and more happens, just like the games themselves. So I guess it learned from its own inaction. It's like they wanted to do more, but they didn't have the budget or the attention span. Is it a visual beast? Color Splosion! There was a bit too much bloom at the beginning of the series, but I think it learned its lesson because it toned it down a bit. I thought it was a joke on next-gen graphics. Either that or Wind Waker HD got a hold of it. The games themselves were a colorful masterpiece, and being translated over to anime, it's almost visual overload. I'm not saying being colorful is a bad thing, but compared to everything else I've reviewed, these colors are reflecting off the surface of the sun, they so bright! I do like how each CPU has the colors of their consoles, and they're designed to represent how people treat their consoles when talking processing power. There are also transformations. Hey, the more skin the better, I guess, but the final result does look kinda cool. There is one cardinal sin that this show does that can't be overlooked. Being serious in a comedy show. This is a comedic no-no. It can be done, but Neptunia? This isn't the franchise to do it in. You have to be a genius to pull this off, Neptunia, and need I remind you that almost every episode ending has you swimming in your own cleavage. I also refer you to the self-aware swimsuit episode that makes fun of anime censorship and calls itself out on being the fanservice episode, and has the longest title in existence to pound the punchline into your head because do you get it yet? That's another problem to add to Neptunia's list. It tries too hard to be funny. There are some jokes at work, but most of them fall flat. There is a scenario where the ladies go to Nintendo Land, filled with coins, pipes, and giant turtles. Good, good, appeal to the gamer side. Neptune gets some food at the park, and one of the turtles knocks her over into a shameful position, and she screams, This turtle is after my peaches! I don't know where you guys were going with this. It seems out of place. I mean, if you were going for the shame shy, you could have at least... Oh my god! I just got it! Oh, That was good! This show isn't fair! It was made for my gender and my mindset as a trap! What first caught my attention was the console war side. I didn't even know that scantily clad Moe Moe Q bullshit was attached. The laughs are there, it knows what it is. It's the butt of every joke when people can't take anime seriously and it loves itself for it. It just wants to have fun with all the boobs and each humor it can muster. It unloads all over people who enjoy this. There are many things that can be glossed over as always just having fun, it's doing its own thing. But as a critic with some self-worth, some things just can't be ignored. Self-awareness, shamelessness, it tries too hard to be funny, every single trope in the book to take all its identity away, to try and make it stand out in an oversaturated market wearing a mask that gamers can recognize. And I love it! I need more! Consider this my anime junk food. I know it's bad for me, but I want more. I need more. Give it all to me! It can test my patience sometimes! It can drive me up the wall! But makes me laugh with the silliest of jokes that I just can't hate it! A glorious disaster of a franchise that banks on gamer humor and sexy girls that wants to have fun poking fun at the gamer and otaku audience it was made to please. <laughs> just stop! Stop the music! Stop playing it! This is the dumbest guilty pleasure I've ever fallen for. And I watch DXD and can admit that it was silly but fun. You win, Neptunia. I give up. Take me. Hypocrite, thy name is the Niskel. Sound it from the rooftops if you have to. But hey, at least it was an original idea. So what was the other simulcast last year? Kinda popular, obviously, or else the anime wouldn't exist. What was it again? Danganronpa. Uh-oh. Nigga!